A little while ago, I came to the Cotswold Wildlife Park with the Fujifilm 50 to 230 lens, the XC lens, the lower quality lens, to see what it was like when I was taking photos around zoos. Now, I, I like taking wildlife, but let's face it, many of us aren't in the position where we can go on safari every year. Well, this year, I, this year, this video, I wanted to do something different because I've got my hand on this. This is the new Fujifilm 70 to 300 mm lens. And I say a new lens because it's only about a year old now and it's still very, very difficult to get hold of new. In fact, for this, I had to wait about three months and when I ordered the lens, they said that there was a good chance that I wouldn't get it this year. That's how bad things have got. However, uh, I've got hold of the lens right now and in today's video, I'm gonna take it out for the first time and see what it's like. So I suppose one of the big questions that people are gonna be asking is, is this a significant upgrade from the uh, 55 to 200? Because I'm guessing that most people will have the 55 to 200 and are thinking, is it really worth it? Well, for me, yes, but I think it all depends on the sort of photography that you want to do. If you're doing landscape photography, then there is less of a reason to pick up this lens uh, than there is if you're doing wildlife photography. For me, the really big benefit of this is that I've got a wildlife lens that I can carry around with me without it weighing me down all the time. You know, the, the closest uh, other sort of focal range we've got to this with Fuji is the 100 to 400, and it's a very, very, very heavy lens. Now, um, I might have spoken about this in a, another video that I've yet to record, but will probably release before this one. I actually have a bit of an injury I, I, I got over Christmas, and it's meant that I can't carry that 100 to 400 mil lens. So if I want to do anything with wildlife, I need something else, and that is where this has come in. The other thing, of course, is if you're doing any sort of action photography, because this is clearly built as an action lens. You can see it with the little switch that they've got on the side, uh, which lets you switch between uh, five meters and infinity. What does that mean? Well. At infinity, uh, you get the full focal range of the lens. At five meters, it just focuses on stuff that is five meters away from the lens, which means that if you're doing something where the, the first five meters of your picture is irrelevant, and you get this sometimes when you're taking birds and maybe in the, at the beginning of the shot, you've got some sort of bushes and greenery and stuff like that. If you're doing something like that, um, then that's a major, major benefit because you are not hunting through uh, that foreground to try and hit your background focus. It means you're going to hit your targets uh, quicker. And when you're doing something like tracking, you're gonna hit them more often, which is really, really good. The focusing on this lens is so fast. I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if it was faster than the 100 to 400. It certainly seems that way from what I've been experiencing but you then have to uh, also understand that actually it's, it's a, a much more condensed focal range as well. So the, the speed may not actually be any different, but certainly the experience of using the lens is, the experience of using this is that it's very, very quick to focus. Now, if you're using video, that's a little bit different. Um, the, it does focus very quickly, but it doesn't focus in the way that you would want your video to focus. And I think a lot of people using focus, relying on that autofocus, might not choose Fuji in the first place. However, having said that, I'm very, very pleased with some of the pictures that I've got. We've just been to see uh, the penguins being fed. And here I was going to add in some penguin photographs, but I wanted to show you these instead. I was very happy to see the otters out. Now, I've been to lots of different zoos, but I've hardly ever seen otters as active as these. Not only did I get this video footage, but I also got some shots as well. Take a look. I think they were waiting for some food because they were sat on a log and they were making a noise like a cat crying. It did mean that not only did I get a shot of an otter, something that I've been wanting to do, for some time, but I actually got two of them together. And that was fantastic. And ultimately, I was over the moon with these otter shots, but it didn't end there. The great thing about zoos is that you have a lot of chances to take many different animals. On this trip, it was the turn of the lovebirds. 
This particular shot was taken through the bars of a cage as well, and you have to edit out any hazing that might be caused by the metal that's in the way of the lens. Overall, though, I think it turned out really well. Let me know what you think in the comments. One of the things I don't really like about making videos like this is that invariably they end up being me sat on a bench somewhere talking about the experience that I've had and not sort of showing you the experience that I've had. But that's really difficult because, uh, especially when you're someone like this, you know, you would need a, a kind of like a portable tripod. I, I mean, a, a tripod that follows you around. Essentially what I'm saying is I need a film crew and I can't afford one. Um, now, one of the things I really like about this lens um, is that it's got on the side, much like the, the 100 to 400, it's got a little lock on it. And that means that you're never going to worry about lens creep on this lens. Now, I had that with the one, uh, the 18 to 135. As soon as I got the lens, I thought, this is brilliant. This is absolutely everything I wanted. Took it out for the first time, and the lens extended as I was walking into a village. And I came up with a solution for it, but it's not the best solution in the world. And I think any lens that's a little bit heavier, that's a little bit more of a, a kind of an extension, you would benefit from having a sort of lock in it like this. This one's got it and I think it's a really, and even though right now it's actually quite, um, it's quite solid when you, when you let it go. Uh, I think over time that might be something that's actually going to come in very useful. The other thing I like about this lens actually, um, to do with that lock is that it really does cement the idea that this is an action lens because what they've done is they've created a lock that a little bit of pressure is going to unlock the lens and let you use it. But if you don't put that pressure on, it's going to hold the lens in place so that when you're walking around, it doesn't extend itself. It's a very smart idea, I think. The only worry is, will that last for a long period of time? Are we going to find out in a couple of years time that actually that lock becomes useless? I don't know, we'll have to find out. But for now, I really like that feature because it means you don't have to worry about whether your lens is locked. You pick it up, you focus, you, you create the shot that you want, and then you, you go. Something which is absolutely vital if you are taking those kind of action shots. Now, I've just been in with the lemurs. It's been feeding time with the lemurs. So hopefully right now, I will have a couple of uh, photos of lemurs for you. I, I just have to check that that was right because a couple of times I've tried this and I've said llamas. It's not, they're not llamas. They're definitely lemurs. They're ring-tailed ones. Have a look at these. The best thing about the lemurs was that they had babies. Babies are rather rare in captivity because the zoo has to liaise with other zoos to make sure that they can breed properly and that they're not breeding with their own brothers and sisters. Because of this, it was a sheer fluke that I was able to get these shots and I couldn't be more pleased with the results. Time and again, zoos have delivered great opportunities for photography that would not be possible without them. Of course, there's nothing like seeing these animals in their own habitat, but most people can't get to these habitats, and they certainly don't have the money to visit such a wide range of animals in such a short space of time. But you don't always get the things the way that you want, of course. After a bit of a walk, I was ready for some more photography, but it didn't quite go the way that I'd planned. Well, I've come to my last stop today. Um, I was going to uh, have a look at the rhinos who have, uh, aren't out at the moment and the lions who aren't out at the moment. <laughs> so I'm going to have to leave that for today. But one of the great things about coming to a place uh, like the Cotswold Wildlife Park is that it's local to me. I can come again. I will get those shots because I've got those shots before. A little bit of a shame because I wanted to see what this was like with the lion, but then I might get a chance to do that uh, later on in the year at a, a wildlife uh, park, a safari park. Um, I'm due another visit and I, I, I think it'd be a great idea to test this thing out. Now, so far, I've not looked at the actual pictures. I'm eager to kind of rush home and see what those actual pictures look like because on the back of the camera, they look absolutely fantastic, but you know what this is like. Sometimes you get this thing into Lightroom and it doesn't quite look the way that you think it's going to look in the camera. Uh, having said that, uh, the experience of using this lens over the 100 to 400 has been absolutely night and day. The, I'm getting sharper images. I'm getting uh, a, a higher keep rate. I think in part, you might say it's a sharper lens. I don't think that's strictly true. I think what's happening is that I'm getting um, uh, less 
problems holding the lens because it's not as heavy. And that makes a massive, massive difference. And for what you actually get in terms of reach with the 100 to 400, I'm not sure that actually that's, that's gonna make much of a difference. Add into that the fact that you can use the 1.4 or the two times teleconverter with this lens. Now I might be going over teleconverters a little bit later on. There's a few channels out there who've said actually teleconverters, when you put them next to, you know, side by side, it's not making enough of a difference to kind of spend the money on them. I've got the 1.4 teleconverter. I might as well give it a go and see what it actually looks like. Um, but sorry, I digress. Um, I can try it with those things. I can, I can see what they're like. Uh, but I don't know that the tele teleconverter is going to give me that much extra. Whereas I do know that a program like Topaz Gigapixel, which I'll be talking about in a video soon. I don't know, I'm recording everything in one go and I don't know when I'm going to release it. So in a video at some point, I'll be going over Gigapixel. Um, that can increase the size of your pictures, which means that you can you can crop out, as long as you've got a nice sharp picture to begin with, you can crop out a tiny part of that picture and you can still have it nice and sharp and big and printable and looking good. It's a massive, massive change in the way that we think about doing photography, especially wildlife photography. I do want to mention on this video, and I think I probably will on the other one as well. I'm talking about AI here, but you know, AI isn't actually, it doesn't, add a lot to it. It might sharpen it a little bit, but if that's just smart sharpening. It's something that actually you could probably do yourself if you were to take the time to sharpen little bits of your image in Photoshop and not just do the whole thing all at once. Nobody wants to do that though, so we've got AI to do it for us. This isn't making stuff up in the computer. This is enhancing what we've already got. Big difference. Massive, massive difference. Anyway, um, I'm really pleased with this lens so far. Um, I'm also gonna go out uh, to Slimbridge soon, uh, do some shooting uh, there, some uh, sort of wildfowl stuff in Slimbridge. So that will be interesting to see as well. Again, with this lens and see how it compares to the 100 and 400. I've also got a few other videos that I want to do, uh, taking a look at this alongside the 50 to 200 and uh, the 50, sorry, 55 to 200 and the 50 to 230. Uh, I think we might, get some pleasant surprises with those lenses because they're great lenses. Uh, but so far for me, this is a massive, massive upgrade. That extra little bit of reach at the 300 mil uh, end makes up for the fact that you, you're starting at 70 instead of 50. Taking one or two steps back makes up for the fact that you're starting at 70 instead of, uh, instead of uh, 50. So I'm pretty impressed with what I've got here. Now I've already posted something on Instagram. And so if you go over to my Instagram account, you'll be able to see what that is over there. Um, if you want to see the pictures in a little bit better detail, maybe, I don't know, everything crop, everything compresses your images nowadays. Um, but until then, that's it for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like, please leave a comment and make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon at the end. And that way you'll get notified anytime I put out new videos. As with always, I'm gonna say this, even though I haven't been doing over the last few months, make sure you keep taking those photos and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody.